was the situation. The Gamecom stunk. Tiger realized, hey, there's a problem. Uh, we, we are gonna lose a lot of money on this thing. So they, they attempted to solve the problem of the Gamecom by releasing another Gamecom. One that's smaller and even crappier than the original. It's the Gamecom Pocket Pro. So this is basically the Gamecom equivalent to such illustrious systems as the Game Boy Pocket and the DS Lite. And it's just as good as those things. If you live in a parallel universe where things aren't things that are good are not good and the sky is orange during the day. In that place, this is a perfectly good remake of a perfectly terrible system that in fact would be good. Because see, that's how Orbit works and it's smaller. So when it comes to what's actually inside this this marvel of human ingenuity, uh, it's, it's largely the same as what was inside the original Gamecom. Here's the menu, as you can see, you still have the same menu, um, the same software installed, there's your phone book, your calendar, your calculator, all your PDA functionality, it's all there. The difference is, it's a lot smaller, uh, and what's, what's kind of strange is that the screen is also smaller. So here, this was Tiger's thought process. Hey, uh, our screen is terrible, and our system's not selling, what do we do? Hey, let's make the screen smaller. Because that's a good idea. But some of the major changes were that they got rid of this. Uh, obviously there's no more stylus on the front of the system. Now there's a little slot on the back for your stylus. And uh, speaking of the back, the Gamecom Pocket Pro only has one cartridge slot. Whereas the original Gamecom, uh, one of the cool things was that it had two cartridge slots. So, you know, if you, if you just couldn't get enough Gamecom and you had no time to be fumbling with cartridges, you could stick two of them in there. So much for that. I guess they realized that no sane human being needs more than one Gamecom cart in their Gamecom at any given moment. But you know, I, I think the most disappointing thing about the Pocket Pro is that of all the things that a redesigned Gamecom should have tried to fix, you'd think the screen would have been at the top of the list, right? But here's the problem. The Gamecom Pocket Pro does take some steps to fix the screen, uh, but it doesn't replace the screen. It's still the same crappy screen, and none of the measures it took actually improved anything at all. In fact, it, it kind of made it worse. The other thing they did, uh, and really the biggest thing they did when it comes to the screen, is that, oh, now you can play the Gamecom in the dark. You know, because, because that was the Gamecom's problem. Sunset. You know, in, in true Gamecom fashion, uh, this improvement isn't really an improvement at all. Uh, for starters, this is a front-lit screen, so it's all it's doing is it's got some lights in there shining on the front. Uh, which means that it's only really good for one thing, and that's playing in the dark. And of the Gamecom's 20 games, uh, approximately zero are worth playing in the dark. So ultimately what we're looking at here is really the, the physical manifestation of the Gamecom's first step into the grave, right? Like this is, I mean, this was the ambulance ride, metaphorically speaking. Um, you know, it, it all went downhill from here, and believe me, the Gamecom started off downhill. And actually, Tiger would release a third remodel that was basically the Pocket Pro, only it was available in color. Not the screen, the black part had colors now. So, you know, you could get a green Gamecom to match your puke green screen. What a Christmas gift that must have been. That's only a gift for someone if, you've, if you hate them. They poisoned your, your pet gerbil. You give them the Gamecom Pocket Pro. And you let them stew for all of eternity in Gamecom torture. But it does have a touchscreen.